So we're here in our new segment for truckandbus.net.au and it's called CEOs Getting Coffee. So we're having a bit of a chat to the president of Volvo Group Australia, Peter Verhoeven. Tell us a bit about Peter Verhoeven. What, what are your passions? What are my passions? That, that's a good question. I, I think, uh, and it might sound a bit boring, but I think my, my family is a big passion of me. I have a 10-year-old uh, son, a 12-year-old daughter, uh, and of course a wife as well. Uh, you know, the old joke, one wife, two children, not the other way around. <laughs> we, we've been living in a couple of countries already that brings you a bit closer together because, you know, you know more dependent upon each other. Uh, I really enjoy uh, spending time with them, uh, yeah. but then I do uh, escape the occasional Saturday morning for a round of golf, uh, which of course you have beautiful opportunities here in Australia. When you were a kid in Holland, what did you what would you, did you want to do with your life? Did you manage, ever imagine you'd grow up running a, a branch of a multinational company in Australia? Well, certainly not in Australia, of course. I mean, I did not plan to come here and run the Volvo Group. Uh, when I grew up in Holland, um, I knew, I mean, from early age, I, I have always been attracted to travel. Uh, when I went to university, I did an, an internship in, at that moment, the store still called Czechoslovakia. Mm. Uh, right, that was in 1988, half a year before the well in Berlin, Berlin Fall, and I spent six months in a, in a fairly communistic uh, uh, city called Brno. Uh, I did my uh, master thesis in the US. So I've always been traveling around. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was kind of, you know, from the beginning in there. Uh, then after university, I started with the paper industry. I actually ran a company myself for a couple of years, which was uh, such an enormous success that I decided to uh, <laughs> join Volvo. <laughs> join Volvo. Exciting time for Volvo at the moment. I mean, a lot of things happening. You, you know, new HQ, um, yeah. Yeah. obviously you're number one in the heavy duty market with yeah. Volvo Mac and, and UD combined. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I presume you're also making money. As well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, listen, as I always say, we're not a post office or a museum, right? I mean, we do this, we are a commercial enterprise uh, and our shareholders expect us to make, uh, to make a certain profit. Uh, what you can say, by the way, on, on the global level, uh, the last couple of years has been a bit meager, if I may call it like that, yeah, yeah. in this word. Um, but with all the um, uh, efficiency programs that we had, we've taken out some cost. We have restored our profitability in a pretty, in a pretty good way. I mean, if you look at it, the Volvo Group runs at around 50 billion Australian dollars, depending upon the, uh, the currency, but say, you know, roughly 50 billion dollars. And we moved our profit from 1 billion to 4 billion. So, you know, there's, there was a good jump and we believe that we are now in a far more profitable environment. That's good work that the previous president, Olof Persson, did uh, with his whole consolidation. Yeah, yeah. And now we have, as you have heard, we have a new president, Martin Lundstedt, very much on customer focus and top line growth um, and, and very much uh, focused on, you know, customers and how we work in the, in, in, in the market. Uh, you are aware that he was here. In his uh, first six months, he uh, found it in, uh, important to, to visit Australia. And that was also for me a bit of a confirmation, if you want, that, that apparently we're doing a good job. And yeah, you're right. We are. When I came to this country two and a half years ago, uh, people asked me, "So, Peter, what's your what's your goal? What's your mission in life? What what did they tell you in Sweden to do here?" And and I told them, "Well, they didn't really tell me that much in Sweden. But one thing that I do know, and that's from my from my past." I'm very much a service-minded guy. I like, I've been always in the aftermarket. I believe service, I think my, my family, my father was a service provider. I strongly believe that if you give people the right service, they will stay with you and they will come back. Uh, and then they said, well, what about, you know, your market share and do you want to be number one? And I said, well, at the end of the day, everybody wants to be number one, right? But how interesting is that for my customer? Not so. What my customer is five, finds far more interested is I'm interested in him that I want to do whatever I can to keep him on the road and be, be productive. Now, I would not say this only, of course, uh, if you then also see, and you see that by the smile on my face, is that we all of a sudden saw our, saw our market share going up again, 26.2% with the three brands. 14.9 yeah, for Volvo, 9.3 for Mac, 2.1 for Udi, all in the heavy duty segment. One out of every four trucks comes out of my factory. Yep, <laughs> pretty impressive. Uh, and very happy, but not not because we want to be the number one in market share, because we believe so strongly in the success of our customers. 
Hey, Martin Lundstedt was here last week. Yeah. It's you know pretty hectic time. Do um, you get nervous when a new president comes to across the world to visit you and look over your shoulder if you like? Well, you know, in all fairness, no. Uh, I was excited. I think I was very excited that he came. Nervous, no, because I mean. We're doing a good thing here in, in, in Volvo Group Australia. We have our value chain. What I was very excited about is that when he came into the company, he said, I'm interested in, in customers. I want to see what's happening in the market and I'm interested in local value chain. That was like music to my ears. Yeah. Uh, I share with him the same customer centricity, customer orientation. Uh, but also, we have the local value chain. We have everything here in Australia. It's like a mini Volvo Group. We have re R&D, uh, we have the factory, uh, we have the whole uh, market company and we have the retail function. Eh? Part of the retail is wholly owned, so we have that whole local value chain yeah. here. So I was very excited. And then of course, you know, you, you, what, the only thing is what you need to be nervous about is that you don't try to put too much in the program. Uh, I think we put a lot in the program. <laughs> Speaking of timing, they say that you know, timing is the most important element in comedy, but it's also pretty important in business. Yeah. And so, there's a lot of things coming together at Volvo at the moment. It looks like it's a pretty good time to be a president of a Volvo subsidiary or even Volvo. Yeah. The, uh, the, if you talk globally, I think we're going in the right direction. We have had some changes and an organization like this, organization like that. I think we have now found the right mod modus operandi. If you look at our products, I think we can easily say that regardless of what brand, and I'm talking globally now, right, but Australia is, is, is the same, same story. Our quality has never been so good. Uh, Volvo, uh, and of course I say that because I make them myself, undisputable, very high quality. I think one of your, your colleagues at, the, at a certain moment said after we introduced the FH, he said, Peter, do you realize that this is the smoothest new product introduction ever in the market? Because we came with the new FH and bang, I mean, it, you know, it, yeah. it, there was no dip, there was no kind of, you know, oh, we need to do it like this. So, very good, very good quality. Same thing for Mac, where we used to have maybe some problems in the past, and they're behind us. We worked very hard on that. UD is still the best kept secret, and my job is to make it less of a secret. Um, so that's that's of course for me very comfortable, right? It's yeah. it's almost not difficult to sell with a quality like that behind you. The the, the but the story is, it's more. Than, it's not only the quality. It's the customer focus. It's the service. Yeah. It's you know go that extra Pretty mile. Nice things together. Yeah, and if you then look at where we are today, yes. Uh, we're leading the market, uh, we're the largest manufacturer. Let's not forget that except for UD, Mac and Volvo are built here, which I think is important for a country like Australia that should be proud of its manufacturing capacity. Uh, and you know, we're playing, we're playing our part, so I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's very important. We're building a new dealership on the Ipswich motorway, and that's the place where our customers meet us, that's the place where we maintain the trucks, and that's where we we you know, get our tricks ready to, uh, to give excellent uptime. So I'm very excited about that. So you're doing a, obviously doing a fantastic job and I presume one day Martin Lundstedt will pick up the phone in Sweden and say, Pete, you've done such a great job in Australia. <laughs> we want you back here in Gothenburg or Pennsylvania or wherever, or China perhaps. Uh, <laughs> what, will it be hard to leave Australia? Well, yeah, of course, but I mean, it, 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 it's hard to leave every job that you do with passion. And I mean, you know, and this is truly a, ve a very good, very good, good job. I mean, the country is fantastic. The, the, the customers are fantastic. They're very advanced. Transport in Australia is, of course, far more advanced, if you want, than in other countries because you don't have rails here. A uh, big country, not so many people, no railway system. So your trucks are being used in a different way. So technically, it's, it's, it's very challenging. Um, so yeah, of course it will be it will be difficult to leave here. But I'm not talking and neither thinking about leaving. Uh, what I said when I came here is that you know this is the kind. Of, it's a big job, right? And Volvo Group Australia is a big company. I don't think you can kind of you know come in, come out, you know, uh, and then within two or three years take the next one. Um, we actually discussed it a little bit uh, with Martin, and he said, uh, "Is it so funny?" He said, "Every time I talk to you about how is it Australia, all of a sudden you become very low profile." Oh, it's okay. <laughs> He said, you're so passionate about everything. Whenever I ever ask you how is life here, then you're very, oh, it's okay, it's not too bad. <laughs> he said, just be honest, it's a fantastic place to live. I said, yeah, yeah, it is a fantastic place to live. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think Volvo's biggest advantage is in Australia? Local manufacturing and local R&D, I think, are, are by far together. Yeah. Uh, I think we understood that if you want to be successful in Australia, where, the, where it's 
tougher, and you know we always say this, but we always say this, but it is really true. It's tougher, longer distance. Uh, you're the whole, and from a technical point of view, we call it the war of the chassis, right? You need to re organize your chassis space. That's why we have uh, 45 engineers looking at some local R&D so that we can make those products that are needed here. Yeah. But based upon a global architecture, right, we cannot, by the scale, have your own typical truck here. So global architecture, but then locally adapted for the Australian market. Build here, customers like that. I think it's good to work on the Australian economy um, and our, our, of course, our customer service uh, focus. What's the biggest challenges? My biggest challenge is most probably to ensure that wherever you go in Australia that you get the exact same service uh, in either of our dealerships, be it a UD dealership, be it a Mac dealership, be it a Volvo dealership. It makes consistency is often uh, the most difficult thing to uh, realize. Now, does that mean that we have bad and good dealers? No, all our dealers are good. Uh, are they all consistent? No, not yet. But we're, we're getting there. So I want that, that full consistency, that almost that you know, Apple store kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, experience. And yeah. We're not completely there yet. I've never met a Dutchman yet who didn't embrace football, <laughs> round ball football. Um, you know, all of you seem to have a passion for it. Johan Cruyff, you missed oh. a football died the other week. Yeah, and, yeah. and of course, Australia's biggest success has came on the back of a, a Dutch coach in Hoos Hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 The question to you is, what will happen in a couple of years' time when, well, in uh, Russia when the World Cup comes and maybe the Netherlands is drawn against the Socceroos? Where, where does your faith lie? Yeah, it's going to be all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very Socceroos upset if you didn't say that. Yeah. No, no, but the Socceroos are good. I think they're playing really, really mm. well. But uh, no, no, but the, but the, but the, thing, the thing is, the, 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 the Dutch is that we've never become world champion. That was big, Johan Cruyff's biggest, uh, biggest yeah. of course. So it's, it, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a, uh, it was a pity. You, you know that Johan Cruyff was not only a great football player, but he has, he was known, but that was in Dutch for his, uh, for his uh, literacy, right? Yes. He has this. Uh, so one of his uh, famous things was every advantage has its disadvantage, mm. or, or if you have the ball, the others don't have the ball. Yeah. There's probably a lot of lessons to be learned for business yeah, yeah, out of yeah. it. Yeah, he was a wise man. He was yeah. a wise man. Yeah. Just finally, Pete. Yeah. If you met your 12-year-old self today, what advice would you give him? Uh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, if I would my meet myself as a 12-year-old, I would most probably say to do the same. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, 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 it, it's, it's, and your life is, I don't believe people can plan their life. Your life is normally a an, 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 an whole series of, of events and some things you plan and some things just happen to you. And I think the whole trick in life is to take, you know, what's handed to you and, you know, do the, do the best with that. Uh, and there, there are not a lot of things that I did in my life that I regretted, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I think what I like most and what I would certainly encourage myself to do again is keep that international perspective. We have yeah. such a beautiful world and the diversity, I mean, I've had the opportunity and I was lucky enough, lucky enough by the way, to live in China, to live in Singapore, to live in Australia. Our home base is, uh, is, is Belgium. Uh, the world is such a beautiful place. Uh, if you can, you know, uh, enjoy that, that, that uh, yeah, yeah that, that's what I would encourage myself to do again. Pete, thanks very much. Thank you, John. Cheers.